welcome to Muscular Skeletal. Part one will focus on anatomy, physiology, and assessment. Here are the objectives for musculoskeletal. We'll identify the basic principles of mobility and body alignment, identify complications of adult geriatric clients with impaired alignment and mobility, describe selected disorders of the muscular skeletal system, apply the nursing process in the care of the adult and geriatric client with impaired alignment and mobility, and describe common medications and analgesics utilized in treating musculoskeletal disorders. The musculoskeletal system is made of bones, joints, and muscles. For bones, we have 206 bones in our body, and they consist of long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. Our bones are in a constant state of creation, maintenance, and absorption. The regulating factors for these are the amount of stress and weight bearing on the bones, our vitamin D levels, our parathyroid and calcitonin activity, and blood supply to the bones. Our bones are all connect together to form our skeleton. Our skeleton supports the soft tissues of the body, protects crucial components of the body, gives surfaces for the attachment of muscles, tendons, and ligaments, and provides storage areas for minerals and fat, and also produces blood cells. Our musculoskeletal system also contains joints. We have several types of joints, immovable joints, limited movement joints, and freely movable joints. There are five types of freely movable joints, ball and socket, hinge, saddle, pivot, and gliding joints. Joints have their own structure, including ligaments, tendons, cartilage, fat, and fluid. Our joints can move up to 15 different ways. This includes flexion and extension, rotation, pronation, and supination, and inversion and eversion. The last part of our musculoskeletal system is our muscles. We have three types of muscles, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. For the purpose of this topic, we're gonna to focus on skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones and other structures by tendons. Skeletal muscles are encased in a fibrous tissue called fascia. Skeletal muscles help with motion, maintaining our posture, producing heat for our body, and facilitates return of blood back to the heart. When our muscles contract or get shorter, this causes movement of the body part the muscles are connected to. Muscles also have the ability to get stronger and weaker. When they get stronger, we call it hypertrophy, and when they get weaker, we call it atrophy. Now we're gonna talk about how we assess the muscular skeletal system. When we assess our patients, we need to start with their history. We need to discuss the person's functional abilities. Can they complete their ADLs or do they require assistance? Are they using any assistive devices to help them do their ADLs or to help them be mobile? We need to assess their family history to see if they're at risk for something. We need to assess their learning needs as well as their social economic factors that may affect their ability to move and function. We also need to assess what medications they are taking, including over the counter. When we complete our physical assessment, we need to assess for any areas that are painful, tender, or have altered sensation. We want to assess their posture and gait while ambulating. If needed, we should assess their bone integrity and joint function. We may need to assess their muscle strength as well. We should be assessing their skin as that is a great way to determine how well they're functioning. Other things we may need to consider without assessment include their developmental stage. We focus on adults and the elderly in block one, but the muscular skeletal system does change with the developmental stages. We also need to consider lifestyle and attitudes and values related to mobility. A young adult who is an athlete may be considered healthy, but they're at risk for muscular skeletal issues, especially injuries. Some people do not value exercise and mobility, which may lead to decreased mobility and bone loss. There are many diagnostic tests we can do to assess the muscular skeletal system. I listed them here for you. But the most common we see are x-rays for bone injuries, CT scans or MRIs for tissue damage, torn muscles, ligaments, cartilage, and tendons. We can also do bone density scans to see how dense or how hard the bones are. After that, many of these diagnostic studies listed are invasive procedures and some do require general anesthesia. And this is the end of part one.